Sharpen your knives and tighten those bibs, y'all, because we're ranking all the Disney World steakhouses from worst to best today here on DFV Guide. Hey everybody, it's AJ for Disney Food Blog, and if you're hungry, then this video is just going to make you a lot hungrier because we're about to dive into the realm of Disney World steakhouses and show you which ones you're going to want to add to your Disney World noshing itinerary. Now, a few super quick things. Keep in mind that no steakhouse is completely bad and no steakhouse is completely perfect either, which is why in these rankings, we'll also be giving you the pros and cons of each place because what could be our least favorite steakhouse might actually end up being your very favorite and vice versa. That's how Disney restaurants work. Also, just to cover my bases here, a con for every single one of these steakhouses is definitely going to be how expensive they are. Steakhouses are pricey, so you're definitely going to want to budget for these extra expenses if you want a nice meal at any particular one of these. We will be talking about a couple of different savings opportunities that could help you keep some of that money in your wallet, but as a general rule of thumb, start saving now for those quality meats. And finally, if you love our restaurant ranking videos, we actually have a full PDF featuring our top 10 restaurants in each Disney World park. So if you want to learn about our number one restaurants for each park, as well as the Disney Springs Shopping District, make sure to scan that QR code you see right now or head on over to DisneyFoodBlog.com slash top restaurants. Okay, as usual, we're ranking worst to best here. We're going to launch in with STK Orlando. While Disney Springs is usually the place where you're going to find my most favoritest restaurants of all time, the steakhouse here has to be put on the bottom of my list today. But first, let's talk a little bit about what STK Orlando is all about. This is a chain steakhouse franchise. It's got one in Vegas, etc. It's got its biggest location here in Disney Springs. Now, this restaurant is definitely a more modern take on a traditional steakhouse. It's got a sleek layout rooftop dining, a DJ that cranks up the tunes during dinner. It is a party here, y'all. And depending on your personal preference, that might be just the kind of scene you're looking for. Think of dinner here like Disney meets Vegas. The nighttime atmosphere definitely gets loud and nightclubish, which keeps the energy high, but can also be really overwhelming and distracting if you're not expecting it. Lunchtime is a lot calmer here, less dance club, more chill, but the steak selections that you're going to get during either dining period are going to be the same quality and same price. So here's the thing, the steak here is not bad, actually it's really good. The char on the outside gives it that nice smoky flavor while the cut itself is usually cooked just the way you request it. So the only thing I can say about it is there are so many other steak houses on this list today that just do things a little bit better. And I'm not talking about the overall atmosphere, I'm talking about the individual priced sides too that can range between 13 and 36 dollars just for your side and while your first steak dipping sauce does come included with your cut of meat any other sauces you want to try on the menu are priced at two dollars per itty bitty dipping cup if your group really wants to eat here you're not going to have a terrible meal it's really some of the best steak on property but you are going to pay very 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 high prices my advice try timing an stk visit around happy hour between 3 and 6 p.m stk orlando has happy hour specials with half off specialty cocktails, some $10 wines, and two five, seven, and eight dollar food specials, which will not include steak, but hey, savings are savings, might as well take advantage. You may also want to try the prefix 45 minute power lunch to save on paying a lot of extra money for apps, entrees, and desserts. This prefix offering has very limited choices, but will provide you with a full three course meal with steak frites as one of the options, starting at $45 per person. And considering that those tuna tartare taco appetizers featured on this prefix menu are normally $31 by themselves, this could definitely be a worthy investment. Pros here, lunch provides a more relaxing atmosphere. If you're bringing little kids, lunch is where it's at. Dinner is a good option for those who like really high energy environments. This is definitely a date night spot. And of course, they got those happy hour deals. Cons for STK, it's not just the steak that's expensive. Many items on this menu are overpriced. And it's not the best for families. It's also not the best for plant-based eaters. Very limited plant-based options here. Next up is Toledo Tapas Steak and Seafood. Now this is the most unique steakhouse offering on our list. You can find this table service location sitting right atop Coronado Springs Grandestino Tower. And while you're gonna find some solid cuts of steak in this restaurant, you can also expect other cuisine inspired by Spain, like small plates with charred octopus and Rioja braised chorizo, as well as house boards with numerous charcuterie and cheeses. And if you'd like a little wine to go along with your Tapas Steak and Seafood, Toledo is very proud of the fact that 80% 
90% of its vintages on their extensive wine list are sourced from Spain. And can we talk about those rooftop views for a second? The Florida ceiling windows offer sweeping views across property, and depending on what time you're here for dinner, you might even be able to catch both the Epcot and Hollywood Studios fireworks from that high up vantage point. Now, I had to put Toledo farther down on the list simply because if you're looking for a ton of steak options, you're not going to find that here. While steak is a big part of Toledo with some melt-in-your-mouth cuts and super juicy quality, it's not the driving force of this restaurant. More so, you're probably going to want to come here to challenge your palate and try some of the restaurant's more unique dishes too. Not to mention, Toledo is kind of out of the way when it comes to the other steak houses. Sure, you're still going to be on Disney property, but you're not really going to be in the backyard of any of the parks, so you'll need to make sure you factor in that extra travel time if you book a reservation here. It's also important to note that Toledo is only open during dinner between 5 and 10 p.m. nightly, meaning you've got a very limited range of time to hit up this place and give it a try. But if you can, or if you're staying at Grandestino Tower during your visit anyways, then this adventurous restaurant could be a solid and super different one to make reservations for. Pros here, gorgeous views. Also, they have more tapas style options, allowing you to try different choices with your steak and more unique than your typical steakhouse. Cons, not going to be the best for picky eaters for sure. And it's kind of out of the way from everything since Grandestino is kind of out of the way as a resort in general. It's way over there by Animal Kingdom. So you will have to factor in travel time. And it's also not great if you're scared of heights because it's really high up there. But that's less of a con and more of a just FYI. Because don't forget, fireworks. All right, next on our list is Yachtsman Steakhouse. Surprisingly low, but that means there's a lot of good to come up because this is a good restaurant. For all you steakhouse purists out there, Yachtsman is probably one of the best Disney restaurants for you. Yachtsman Steakhouse is tucked away inside Disney's Yacht Club Resort, which is one of the reasons it's often overlooked. However, if you do take the time to make a reservation here, you're gonna get the chance to eat inside a Craftsman-inspired dining room with some of the most amazing cut in-house steaks. In the past, our butcher cuts here, whether it be an 8 ounce filet or a 16 ounce prime ribeye have been cooked precisely how we ordered them. They are buttery and crispy on the outside with perfectly grilled edges. Much like STK Orlando, you're going to have to pay for those premium steakhouse sauces, but Yachtsman does make it worth your time by giving you enough sauce to enhance the overall flavors of the meats in a way that's delightful. Again, it's all about portion size. While each steak will come with a recommended sauce that's supposed to bring out the best flavors of the specific cut you're ordering, you're still more than welcome to pick whichever one you want, and it'll still be a good choice. Think of the atmosphere here as well, the exact opposite of what you're going to find at STK. Everything is very quiet during dinner, but because the restaurant is so close to the feature pool, Storm Along Bay, you might wind up looking out the window at people running around and swimming, all while chomping down on your fine and fancy steak. Not necessarily a bad thing, but the contrast is admittedly kind of bizarre. Now, let's say you don't want the whole sit-down steakhouse dinner experience, but you'd rather have an abbreviated version of it instead. You can do that. Yachtsman is connected to the Cruise Cup Lounge. And while this lounge area does have some items that are entirely unique, it also has a selection of bites that come straight from the restaurant's main menu too. So if you're looking to try some of the items from Yachtsman, but you can't or don't want to grab a reservation there for dinner, you can always put your name on the Cruise Cup walk-up wait list for a few of their eats and drinks instead. Sadly, my favorite prime rib sliders aren't on the menu there anymore. For those of you who've been following our channel for a long time, you know how much I loved those pre-COVID before everything closed, but but there is prime rib on the menu, so I guess you could make your own sliders. Pros for this one, it's a classic steakhouse experience in the best way. It's great for couples looking for a date night and also great for those looking for less in-your-face characters and Disney theming. Cons, maybe you want something more adventurous. Again, this is a very classic steakhouse vibe. Another one that's not too exciting for the kids, unfortunately. And if you're dining here a little bit earlier in the evening, you're gonna see a bunch of people in the pool, which is kind of cool and kind of weird. So. That could be a clash in vibes for you. Moving on to Shula's Steakhouse. Maybe you haven't heard of Shula's before? That might be because we're kind of cheating with this one. While Shula's Steakhouse is technically located in Disney World, it's not housed in a Disney-owned resort. Instead, you're going to find Shula's at the Walt Disney World Dolphin Hotel, which is technically owned by Marriott, but partners alongside Disney and is within walking distance to both Epcot and Hollywood Studios. But I'm getting off topic. Let's get back to the steaks. 
Shula Steakhouse is named after the location's original owner and American football great, the late Don Shula, which is why you're going to find a lot of sports memorabilia and framed football pictures in here. Think of this restaurant as the ultimate compromise. If you're wanting a nice classy date night meal, but your partner would rather eat in a sports bar, then Shula's is going to give you the best of both worlds, as well as some really, really good steak. Shula's is certainly a no frills kind of steakhouse. It's not going to hook you up with super fancy plates or silverware or anything because they don't need all the the extra stuff to impress you. It is old school. It is classy. It is dark wood. That's the vibe. The steaks here are simply great cuts of meat cooked just the way you ordered them. And if you're feeling really hungry, you can even order the 42 ounce prime tomahawk here for $155. That is a lot of meat. Excellent to share. It's a great cut. Now, do I kind of wish there were more accompaniments along with these meals? Yeah, but again, classic steakhouse. So that means you can choose what sides you want, but they will cost you a little extra. And by the way, these sides are huge. They are absolutely shareable. Please do not think that by ordering like two or three sides, you're only gonna get tiny little portions. They are massive. Now, while Shula's does lack that extra bout of Disney magic we love seeing inside other restaurants on property, the food here is filling, it is tasty. Again, classic steakhouse, and the service continues to be top notch. Pros here, you wanna dine outside the Disney bubble without actually leaving the Disney bubble. And it's best for sports bar fans who like to be classy and sophisticated every now and then. Believe it doesn't feel like a sports bar in here. It feels very fancy. So that whole vibe is just because there's a lot of football paraphernalia going on. And you can get the steaks Oscar style for an upcharge. Cons, again, not a lot of plant-based options here. Also, you're missing the Disney magic and it's only open for dinner. All right, I'm about to reveal the DFB team's top two steakhouses on property and give you a few other bonus steak and Entries as well because I could probably talk about steak all day long and that's a big reason why the team and I have put together the DFB guide to Disney World dining which is now live on the dfbstore.com website not only will this guide tell you about so many more places to get some great meat and some plant-based options too surprise surprise but it'll also provide you with honest reviews and budgeting tips and full color pictures for restaurants and entrees alike if you'd like to download your digital copy today make sure to type in code YouTube before you check out to save money on your total purchase. And as always, I thank you so much for your support of what we do here at DFB. All right, let's get back to the countdown. Number five on our list, Steakhouse 71. Steakhouse 71 might be the newest steakhouse in the Disney bubble, but it's quickly made a name for itself around property as well as in our hearts. Steakhouse 71 opened at Disney's Contemporary Resort, replacing the wave of American flavors on Disney World's 50th anniversary, October 1st, 2021. Now this seems highly appropriate because the restaurant's entirely themed around the year Disney World first opened, i.e. 1971. Inside the restaurant, you'll find lots of black and white photos from when the park was in its construction stages and colorful retro paintings and depictions of the different different lands that you'll find around Magic Kingdom. While Steakhouse 71 is technically open for breakfast, lunch, and dinner, the Steakhouse Cuts menu is only available during dinner time. That being said, you may still be able to request a six ounce filet mignon off menu during lunch hours like we've been able to do in the past. It's not necessarily a guarantee that your server will be able to fulfill that request, but it never hurts to check. So what's so special about this Steakhouse Cuts menu? Well, for starters, this is one of the most affordable places to get a steak on property. Different cuts range in size between six and 14 ounces, and no steak is listed over $40, which is not too bad, especially for Disney standards. But don't think that these cheaper steaks are also cheaper quality. The cuts we've gotten here in the past tend to be moist and juicy and very flavorful. Even Steakhouse 71's prime rib, a meat that can be rather chewy depending on where you order it, has been buttery and tender and it's absolutely massive too, so quantity and quality. But one of the best parts about ordering a steak here is the sauce flight. Remember how I mentioned that those specialty steakhouse sauces from Chula's and STK cost you extra? Well, the first sauce you receive at Steakhouse 71 is on the house. Extra sauces will cost you extra as well. However, you can get a whole Steakhouse sauce flight. I love a flight. I love a sauce with every single Steakhouse 71 sauce available for only six bucks. Considering that gets you seven unique sauces total, that price tag is definitely more than worth it if you're looking to add tons of flavor variety along with each bite. And don't forget about the Steakhouse 71 lounge. If you can't get a reservation for the main dining room area, you're more than welcome to grab a first come first first serve seat at this restaurant's attached bar. Though you're not going to be able to order a full on steak off the limited lounge bites menu, you will be able to order the fan favorite stack burger made with the restaurant's 
signature blend of beef and pork belly, American cheese, lemon aioli, red onion, house-made pickles, and all of it in between two brioche buns. It's absolutely phenomenal. Pros on Steakhouse 71. The lounge here also has some 10 out of 10 bites and drinks. There's tons of those dipping sauces and some of the cheapest steak prices without sacrificing quality. Cons here, most steakhouse cuts are only offered for dinner, though you may be able to sneak a six ounce filet for lunch. And this is not gonna give you those stunning window views like California Grill. It's basically a windowless restaurant. And it's not best for those looking for a quick meal to get back over to Magic Kingdom. It is relatively fast for a steakhouse, but you are going to be pretty weighed down when you head back over to the most magical place on earth. And it's time to talk La Cellier Steakhouse, the moment you've all been waiting for. My favorite, the best, I think, steakhouse in all of Disney World is La Cellier in Epcot. If you've been watching DFB for a while now, this outcome probably didn't come as a shock to you. I don't hide my love for La Cellier, and you probably hear me bragging about it, but I can't help it. It's very, very good. Plus, it's in a park. It's got super chill and relaxing vibes. There's a lot more to it than its menu. So La Cellier is hidden away inside the Canada Pavilion, and it's themed to look like a rustic wine cellar up in Canada, complete with wooden tables and stone walls and candle sconces with little maple leaves on them. But the steaks, they are literally AAA quality cuts that are just perfect. They're cooked just how you want them. They have a nice smoky char on the outside. They have juicy and buttery flavors flavors with each bite, and the sides you get that are, yes, included with the price, really complement the steaks nicely as well, and they're not pedestrian. They are definitely playing with the menu here in good ways. Now, there are also steak enhancements for around $10 to $13 that you can add alongside your meal for some premium side options. I love the poutine, as you know. Now, remember what I said at the beginning of this video, that all steakhouse dining is going to be expensive steakhouse dining. Well, that's true of La Cellier, too, since your meat's going to range in price between $44 and $62, already more expensive than Steakhouse 71. But even if you didn't want to spend all that money on steak, there are other cheaper but limited options on the menu, like the signature poutines are 15 bucks. I get them as a side, I don't know what to tell you about that. And the soups, like the Canadian cheddar cheese soup, as well as the corn biscuits seasonal, that'll be changed out with something less summery for the fall and winter. Those are around $13 each. The one thing I will say against booking a reservation for La Cellier is this. It's not a big restaurant. And while that cozy, intimate feel might be great for some, it might feel a little too close quarters for others, especially those kids who keep asking you when Mickey Mouse is going to come by to say hello. Spoiler alert, he does not, not here. But like a good example from my most recent visit to La Cellier, this was just a few weeks ago, and I was there dining solo, and they sat me at a banquette seat. Y'all know how I feel about banquette seating, right? But I was right in between two groups, and I couldn't even move my arms. It was very, very close quarters, very tight. And I actually asked to be moved to a different table. I told them, I understand I'm only one person. It's okay to move me to a banquette, but if I could be on the end, that would be helpful. So at least I have a little bit of room to breathe. And I don't usually do that. I don't usually choose, you know, ask to, to switch tables or anything. I don't like to make waves or make any problems for the cast members, but I was just uncomfortable sitting there. So I needed to move. So just a heads up, if that's a problem for you, you might want to make sure they know when you check in that you'd prefer not to be sort of squashed between two families. So anyway, if you're trying to find a nice escape from the park chaos, or you want to invest in a nice date night, or you want to celebrate a special occasion, La Cellier is a good option. But if your main goal of the day is to hit up as many parts of Epcot as possible with your younger family members in tow, La Cellier will eat up a good chunk of your time. So pros on this one, great for those celebrating a special occasion. Also, if you want to escape the Epcot crowds for a bit, you can get a nice relaxing meal here. And if you want to eat cheaper, you can eat cheaper, but you're probably not going to get steak. Cons here, not the best for those with kids. Kids are welcome, it's fine, I see lots of kids in there, but it's kind of a boring restaurant for them. Also, reservations can be very hard to come by and it can feel claustrophobic at times. Another quick con is that if you are in Disney World during a hot season, if it's summertime, and you're eating lunch at this very, very heavy steakhouse, it's gonna feel kind of awful to go back out into that 90 plus degree, 100, humidity weather being weighed down with all that food. 
Okay, we've got some bonus entries here. I'm not gonna sit here and pretend that the steakhouses we ranked today are the only places you can get quality steak in Disney World, because steak is pretty much everywhere around the parks. So as a nice little bonus for you, here are my five favorite Disney World restaurants to order a quality steak cut that are not steakhouse specific. First, Morimoto Asia. This is over in Disney Springs in the landing. It's a Pan-Asian restaurant, focuses on Chinese, Japanese, and Korean cuisine. So if you're willing to splurge on some of the best premium steak like ever, then they've got the Japanese Wagyu beef here. Yep, the beef is going to be some of the most expensive beef you're going to get in Disney World. $25 to $30 per ounce with a minimum ounce number required. But the steak is seared right there table side on a hot stone. And if you're big into the whole food experience, then these thinly sliced meat squares might just be flavorful enough to make you cry. All right, the Boathouse. This is a signature restaurant also inside Disney Springs with a culinary focus on steaks and chops and seafood. Well, I've ordered steaks here in the past. The meat might have been thinner than I was expecting, but the quality more than made up for it. You pair that steak along with the boathouse's hand-cut fries and you've got yourself an entree that's just as worthy as pretty much any of the other steakhouses we discussed today. Now, Teppanetto and Epcot's Japan Pavilion is hibachi grill dining. Along with the steak options that are prepared right in front of you, you can also add the A5 Japanese Wagyu steak enhancement here as well. It's expensive, but there's nothing like it. California Grill, that's inside Disney's Contemporary Resort, continues to rake in the awards and honors for its chefs and market-inspired menus and wine lists. And while the menu here is prefix, there are a few steak options for you to consider from your main entree choices. But if you're willing to splurge an extra 47 bucks on top of that prefix price, you can get the Wagyu strip loin, which comes with kimchi fried rice, steamed dumplings, bok choy, and crispy lotus root. Once again, we got another steak that slices as easily as butter and each bite has deep, rich flavor that steak aficionados are gonna love. And Citrico's located in Disney's Grand Floridian Resort. This is a fresh upscale Mary Poppins themed restaurant, but not in the way you think. It's very, very, very subtle and it's got incredible service and food to match. This is a signature restaurant, so high end, right? While Citrico's has a focused menu of fresh Florida cuisine inspired by the cuisine of Provence and Tuscany and Spanish Riviera. I know that's not Florida, right? It's hard to pass up those steaks because they're just that good. So you know what sounds great for dinner tonight? Yeah, me too. Remember, the restaurant ranking fun doesn't have to stop here. Go ahead and hit up DisneyFoodBlog.com slash top restaurants for your free copy of our 10 favorite places to eat inside the most magical place on earth. Thanks for listening, everyone, and thanks for watching. As always, this is AJ for Disney Food Blog, and we'll see you real soon.